Welcome to Life Happens, where Texans come to protect their legacy and prepare for the second half of life. Join your host, Attorney Kim Hegwood of Your Legacy Legal Care, and our weekly guest as we navigate the challenges that emerge as life happens. Now here's your host, Kim Hegwood. Good morning and welcome to Life Happens with me, Kim Hegwood, and our very special guest today is Debbie Poso, and she is with Senior Rides and More. Good morning. Good morning, Kim. Thank you for having me. Now, this is something that's really important to a lot of uh, our seniors in the area. And yes. so, um, because you're a nonprofit that offers transportation help for seniors. Uh, yes, and it is free. And uh, it's so free let's, transportation. Let's, and, and that's even better. Free is always good. And so, so let's talk about it. How did you, how'd you get started? How long you've been doing it? What? Give us some background. Sure. Well, our organization has been in existence for 29 years. I, I was not part of that original um, origination. It was started by a actually a Dominican sister and a registered nurse at MD Anderson 29 years ago. So they came together understanding that there is a need for seniors who were not getting to their doctor visits and not doing follow up visits. And they started a it is a faith based nonprofit. They started through faith in action and received a grant to start this program here in Houston. It started very small, uh, maybe a handful of the zip codes that again, 29 years ago today, it is, uh, we encompass 54 zip codes. So we have grown in these 29 years. That's phenomenal. You know, that uh, it's been going on that long and it's continued to grow and that's always a good thing. It is, that's our goal. Yeah, so tell me, um, how does it work? Um, so I'm a senior, I'm home, I need to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, walk us through the steps of what a would. senior would do. Absolutely. So, Kim, you're a senior. Uh, we do serve those who are 65 and older. Uh, there is some gray area. Don't get me wrong. You know, we are here to help those who need help. We did have to have at least an age starting point to because otherwise it, we can really um, get out of control. <laughs> you know, there's there's everybody has a need in this in this world and we understand that. So we're here to help seniors who've aged out of driving. And we basically decided to start with the social security age, uh, 65 ish and up those who've aged out of driving. We if you are a senior and you are homebound, most of our folks do live alone. The most are women. I can get more into that later on. But what we would do is you would call us. Uh, you can get us, of course, finding us Uh, on the internet, or you can call your area agency on aging, your social workers, insurance companies, they may tell you about us. Then you would contact us and we'll just do a little bit of a vetting process and send you an application. If you do meet the criteria, which is your age, you live in our service area, which is pretty crucial, and you are um, and you are 65 years older. You live in our service area, and you are not in a wheelchair. Unfortunately, you have to be ambulatory. No dementia, or Alzheimer's. That is the initial process. We send you an application. You will send it back to us. We call you. There are a few more questions over the phone that are a little more demographic. That is just for us to be able to apply for grants. Information that we use for that purpose only. You're in. You can do one appointment per week. We have to have advance notice because we do have to find you a volunteer. So that was something not mentioned is that we are free and we try to use volunteers as much as we can. So Kim, you are now signed up with us. You have a doctor's appointment coming up in two weeks because we do need advance notice. You give us that information. My appointment is on Monday, um, you know, this particular date. It's at 10.30 a.m., Dr. So-and-so at 1234 Main Street. Everything's in our service area. We put that into our database. Our volunteer can now log in. All our volunteers have uh, very uh, restrict, not restricted, but password protected access to our database. And they can see who they can help. One of our volunteers notices you're not far. He can help you. He signs up for you, we let you know, and you have a volunteer for that day. The good news is you don't get a volunteer. Let's say you ha- you don't get a volunteer, Kim, the day before we'll call you and say, Kim, you don't have a volunteer. I'm sorry, but we're going to get you to your doctor anyway, because we will provide a Lyft or Uber for you, which we arrange and we pay for. So it is oh. all free to you. Yes. So um As you were talking, something else crossed my mind. Um, Are your volunteers vetted? They are. They are. 
Honestly, most of them come from congregations that support us. Like I said, we are faith-based. Um, we, I mean, that doesn't mean we're strictly a religious organization. We're not. We're here for the community. But we were started through a coalition of churches. And we do try to find a lot of our, actually it's not we try, they just happen to come to us through churches. And these are church members who see our need and they want to volunteer with us. So yes, we do background checks. 99% of our but our volunteers are singers themselves. They're probably in their 70s and 80s. Healthy, capable, drive their own car. They pick you up, Kim. One of them will pick you up and get you to your doctor. And honestly, you you have a new friend. Yeah, I would think that would be a, a nice thing to, you know, get a chance to you know, get a chance to meet new people in the yes. process. And, yes. You know, and uh, so how does the so you've gotten me to the doctor? Yes. Um how do I get home? Do they so wait? The volunteer waits for you. Good question. The volunteer will stay with you the whole time. You know, a lot of our seniors being older in their 70s, 80s, even 90s, uh, vision is a problem. And that is one of the handicaps as we age that comes into play. So vision is low vision is a problem. And our senior is there to help you. That doesn't exclude you from getting a ride. Even if you're using Lyft, you are capable enough, hopefully, to be able to see the car that's coming uh, that we we walk you through it. We don't say to you, Kim, your car's out front, just get in and go. <laughs> I mean, I will tell you, it is a it is a blue Honda Accord. The driver's name is Jonathan. This is the license plate. We we have the map on our the GPS on our computer and we're watching. We know when it's in front of your house. We know when you've gotten in the car because the Lyft driver will switch from waiting for a passenger to on the way to destination, or, you know, so we know when you are on your way. We know when you've arrived because then we'll get an invoice, or not invoice, but a receipt saying that you have been dropped off and the ride is completed. When you're ready to go home, give us a call and we will get you back the same way. Uh, if, if that's a little bit harder because you're at a doctor's office. The buildings are a lot more complicated, but again, we can watch and we will make sure the driver gets to you. And uh, so you have this mechanism in your car that someone pushes the buttons that says, you know, I've, I've made my pickup, I've dropped my pickup off. Does it track anything else? No, this is just Lyft and Uber. So the okay. volunteer doesn't have that. Oh, okay. The volunteer doesn't have that, just Lyft and Uber. So we, that, but they are strangers to you. That's why we want to be able to pay close attention to that. Volunteers we vetted, our volunteers are incredible and um, that we, we don't have that capability with our volunteers. And so, and, um, and so who is normally your typical client? I mean, who do you, what is your demographics as far as the people you serve? The people we serve typically are, um, 80% are female. Uh, it just, it's 80% are female. Most live alone. Uh, some do live with family members, but most do live alone with no nearby family or friend, well, and, or friends. I mean, they have friends, but friends don't drive either. They've aged out of driving as well. So they are, they are women who live alone, 80%, 20% men, um, all, all races, all ethnicity. Um, you know, we are, it, it, that's something that we do keep track of. And that is something that really has no, um, I guess, no, nothing jumps out at us. Everybody is equally distributed in that particular avenue. But also when it comes to age, I'd say our average age is probably about 79. Hmm. It's yes, it's 79. Also, we do have folks who do live with family members, but you know, family members are, they're working. Your, your kids are still working. Your, a lot of our seniors are working, <laughs> still working later and later, but uh, most are also low income. It is not a mandatory criteria that you are low income to get our services. It just happens to be that way. We do have some higher income folks we help. We do ask your income during what our phone conversation again does not exclude you from getting help just something we need to know as for our statistics but the average person we help is a woman who lives alone probably around um, 75 to 85 years old and just needs a little extra help getting to the doctor not just doctor haircut get your nails trimmed uh, go to the bank go to the grocery store we do a little bit of everything perfect so I think you talked earlier that there are some seniors that you you can't help as part of your program. Right. Um, and so would you go go back through those again? And um, I will. 
I will. So because we serve 54 zip codes in Houston, uh, believe it or not, 54 zip codes sounds like a lot. It probably is about one fourth of the greater Houston area. And that's it. So primarily right now, most of those zip codes are southwest Houston. Um, think of it as being I'm trying to think a med center. If you're thinking of a map of Houston, med center, maybe up to I-10, go across I-10 out west to Katy. And sort of that quadrant, that little quarter, quarter of Houston going down into Fort Bend County, uh, not too far down to Richmond Rosenberg. Those are two of our newest areas we've recently expanded to. Then separate that from Northwest Houston. We do have a bubble of about oh, 14 zip codes, I think, in Northwest Houston. And that isn't a bubble by itself right now. There's no connection. And the story behind that is we did take over another nonprofit's ride program. So that's how we got that bubble of, of zip codes. How far down does it go? In down in Southwest? Mm -hmm. in Southwest, we go down into Sugarland, Missouri City, Richmond, Rosenberg, and no. as far west as Katy. So you said you went to the med center. How far no. south of the med center do you go? Not particularly, not that far south. I'm trying to think in my head of a map. So med center, you would go to, you have West University, uh, Bel Air. We serve Bel Air. We serve Southwest Houston, the uh, Gesner 59, pretty much all of 59 down into, into Fort Bend. But, okay, more of the 610 to 59 and then... 610 to 10 kind of area. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. yes, exactly. Right. Exactly. Anything east of 45 is is not part of our program right now, but uh, 288, not part of our program. So basically, it really is the southwest quarter is primarily where we serve. We're hoping to grow. Perfect. And so you mentioned earlier that, you know, that you couldn't do people that had wheelchairs because drivers, their volunteers can't, you know, put a wheelchair in. Um, you also mentioned dementia. So yeah. how do you determine if someone has dementia if you don't know who they are the first good, time? Good question. Good question. Uh, fortunately, most people are honest with us. We do have some folks who say, I do have some memory issues. I mean, that is something we have to grow with because a lot of our our folks who sign up with us are pretty capable at when they sign up with us. They just need, they just can't drive. But we do notice memory issues as they age. Um, we work with that. So someone with full-on dementia, full-on Alzheimer's, it typically is the partner, the spouse who calls us because they need help. We will take that person with dementia or Alzheimer's if the spouse will sign up with us as well. Um, and again, that's easy because there's no charge, but they will sign up as a couple and they will go together. Perfect. So that we have oh, probably five or six couples, I'm going to say, who, who do use us in that manner. Yeah, that's that's perfect, because as long as you have someone to kind of walk them through, you don't yes. want to lose anybody. <laughs> exactly. We have also to lead to another issue is vision impairment. We do have a few who are fully 100 percent blind and they do as long as they have a care. I mean, a um, caregiver or friend who is signed up with us. And the reason they have to be signed up with us, even if they're younger, because there is a waiver of liability when you you sign our the application. So as long as that person is signed up with the waiver of liability, understands our guidelines, they can go with the their their friend or their family member. Perfect. And so, so tell me um, if someone wants a ride and they live in your area that you service, how do they find you? They will find us on, uh, of course, the wonderful internet. We are. You can go to our website, which is seniorridesandmore.org, it's O-R-G. Give us a call at our office, that's always best, 713-772-8181, or send us an email. You can reach us at info, I-N-F-O, at seniorridesandmore.org. Perfect, so, all right, well, this is really good information today, Thank Debbie, you. so, um, I look forward to you reaching more in my area. And um, yes, yes. And remember, we always need volunteers. <laughs> so anybody who wants needs our help or would like to help their neighbor in need, you know, definitely reach out to us. Oh, definitely. And so I've got one of my clients that I go and do things with her. Yes. Because uh, we just have fun. <laughs> and exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so it's always, always good to have, you know, somebody to hang out with and things like that. So. Yes. All right, hon. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you on the on the show again. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Life Happens with Kim Hegwood. Be sure to tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. wherever you listen to your podcast as we navigate through the challenges that emerge as life happens. The content of this podcast does not establish an attorney-client relationship or constitute attorney-client privilege, legal, medical, financial, or any other professional advice.